So the good news is breast cancer survival continues to improve year on year. However, over 11,500 people still die from the disease in the UK every year. This equates to about 32 people every day. So how does breast cancer spread? Well, it can happen in several ways. Today, I'm going to be talking about one of the ways, which is through the lymphatic system. And I'm also going to be talking about how surgeons can check whether this has happened. So stay tuned. How does breast cancer spread? Well, it can grow and invade the surrounding breast tissue as well as the overlying skin of the breast. It can enter the bloodstream and circulate all around the body. And thirdly, it can travel through the lymphatic channels and the lymphatic system. And one of the ways that we can find out if that has happened is by looking at the lymph nodes in the axilla or the nodes in the armpit. So if you come to the breast clinic with a breast lump, you will get investigations such as a mammogram, a knob sound scan, either one or both. You would have also been examined by a doctor as well. It's very likely that you will also get a knob sound scan of the axilla or the armpit. Why do we do this? Well, the reason why we do this is to see whether there are any abnormal lymph nodes. If they're all normal, then we're happy. We don't need to do a biopsy or any other investigation. However, if there are any abnormal lymph nodes, then what we will likely do is do a biopsy to check for cancer cells. The reason why this is important is because depending on what the state of your lymph nodes are, that will determine what kind of axillary or armpit surgery you will need. If you have non-invasive breast cancer, then you won't need, or very unlikely that you will need any form of axillary surgery. But if you have been diagnosed with invasive breast cancer, then you will need some sort of axillary surgery. So what kinds of axillary surgery are there? Well, you can either have a sentinel lymph node biopsy or an axillary nodal clearance. So let's talk about the differences between the two. If your axilla is normal and there are no abnormal glands within it, then you will get a sentinel lymph node biopsy. And that is where we will remove not more than four lymph nodes from your axilla. On the other hand, if there were cancer cells detected in one of the lymph nodes in your axilla, then you will likely be recommended to have an axillary nodal clearance. And this is where we we'll remove all of the lymph nodes from your axilla. What are the differences between the two? Well, a sentinel lymph node biopsy, which is actually an operation, it's not a biopsy, I'm not really sure why they call it a biopsy. Um, a sentinel node biopsy is a shorter operation, you'll have a smaller scar, and you recover pretty quickly afterwards. An axillary nodal clearance, on the other hand, is um, a longer surgery, it, you'll have a longer scar, and it may take a um, little longer to recover from. Again, if you have a central lymph node biopsy, um, we need to find out the exact nodes to remove. And to do that, you will normally get two things. First, you will get an injection of radioactive isotope either the day before surgery or on the day of surgery. And then when you're asleep, you'll get an injection of patent blue dye around the nipple area. Those two things will help the surgeon find the sentinel lymph nodes. On the other hand, if you have an axillary nodal clearance, then you won't need any of those injections because we know um, the areas from which we need to remove the nodes from. So, what are the potential complications and side effects of these two? The common um, side effects are seromas, which is collection of fluid. Um, it's more prominent if you have an axillary nodal clearance rather than a sentinel lymph node biopsy. If you have a clearance, you may be um, given a drain. Uh, a drain might be placed in the um, axilla um, for a few days. The other common um, side effect that we always mention um, is nerve injury and numbness and tingling surrounding the scar. There are lots of nerves in the axilla and if they get injured, especially if you have an axillary nodal clearance, then you may get permanent numbness just underneath the um, upper part of your arm or shoulder stiffness. And the breast kinesis will be recommending you to do certain exercises and I would highly recommend you follow them. And lastly, we have to talk about lymphedema, which is a known um, risk factor following um, any type of axillary surgery. We quote anything between 5% risk if you have a sentinel lymph node biopsy 
or a 20% risk if you have an auxiliary nodal clearance. And it's actually a lifelong risk and it can happen years after the surgery. If you develop it, you'll notice a puffiness and swelling of the forearm or your hand and fingers. And at the moment, it's something we can't reverse. You'll get a compression sleeve to wear, exercises to do, and sometimes we recommend you have manual lymphatic drainage as well. There are some places um, which are carrying out certain techniques to minimize the risk of lymphedema, but at the moment, this is not um, widespread and only certain centers actually do this. Um, the efficacy of this is still being looked at. The other thing that's worth mentioning is um, research is continuing all the time. And there is a lot of research now um, in looking at the merits of de-escalating auxiliary surgery, meaning that in the future, we may be operating far less in the axilla than we are actually doing at the moment. The trials at the moment, looking at the merits of whether we need to do an auxiliary nodal clearance if you had a positive lymph node before you have chemotherapy. Traditionally, if that's the case, then we would remove all of the lymph nodes from your axilla doing an auxiliary nodal clearance um, if you had a positive lymph node before your chemotherapy. But now we're trying to see whether that's at all um, needed. So definitely the future is bright. And I think in the you know, next few years, we will definitely be doing less auxiliary surgery. And that's really good news because it will reduce uh, the morbidity such as lymphedema, as well as potential nerve injuries. I hope this has been helpful and I'll see you in the next one.